Hello class, Miss Roberts here, and today, or tonight, <laughs> we're going to review the small group communication theory chapter. Let's begin. All right, so let me go ahead and put this on presentation mode. All right. So I may need to move my screen, or this little screen that you see me in, around for a little bit. So <clears throat> just to let you know if I'm moving around just to make sure that you, we can both see the screen properly. So I hope everyone's doing well today. Let's go ahead and take a deep dive into small group communication theory. All right. So we're going to go over several key theories in small group communication. Of course, it's not an exhaustive list in the whole of small group communication theory, but here are some key ones or some key theories that you might have seen in other classes or combines certain theories that you might see seeing other subject matters. So we're going to review systems theory, social exchange theory, symbolic convergence theory, structuration theory, and functional theory. All right. I remember when I was taking small group, excuse me, I remember when I was taking communication theory courses, that's the one I'm looking for. Systems theory seemed complicated at first. And I'm like, systems theory? Now, I was exposed to systems theory in communication studies and as a psychology minor. So when you think of a system, think of systems in nature, systems in government, systems in business. So with systems theory, it's just one big organization made up of different small parts that contribute to the functioning of that larger organization, if that makes the most sense. So with systems theory, we're trying to figure out, okay, we have one big organization. How do the little parts of the organization help maintain the structure of the organization? Think about campus or a school, for example. We have our larger campus right but the campus isn't just one big building by itself we're just all stuck in there no it is comprised of administration financial aid disabled student services we have the garden or the groundskeeper we have tech services we have all the administrative buildings or administrative departments rather they there you go the administrative departments and they make up one section then of course we have our classrooms so in our class we are just one communication studies or speech class right but of course we have math we have physics we have English we have business and in their individual classrooms and then you as a student are within those classrooms as an instructor, we are within those classrooms. So all these little parts of the organization creates the whole organization or creates the whole campus. So if you think of it like that, systems theory doesn't have to seem too complicated. So with systems, excuse me, with systems theory, <laughs> we are thinking about which part of our groups excuse me, influence the dynamic of the whole group. As you will learn throughout the semester, you go from a series of individuals to one unit or one group. So a system is composed of inter interdependent variables, inputs, process of the inputs, and the yields of the output. So what is within the unit, what do the moving parts or the people in this case do within the unit that we call a group and what do they produce or what yields the outputs. So small groups are open systems. So openness is refers to the extent in which the group is impacted. So you have your individual group, but 
in this case, as your instructor, are part of that is part of that openness. We have the structure of the class, and I give you the instructions for your projects and how to conduct yourself in the group. So it's part of that openness. But if you think about it further, going back to our metaphor or example of our class and our school as a system, I have requirements from our department of what I teach you, which influences your assignments. So you are, in essence, the example of an open group. You are affected by the environment, the school, other groups, me, all those things. But you're also affected or can be possibly affected by changes in membership, rearranging of goals, and other external factors. So let's break down some other terms in systems theory. Interdependence. So in your groups and in systems, you are interdependent on one another. So one person is not the whole group. It's not about, oh, it's about you, Otis, or I don't know if you remember that meme. I kind of ruined it, but it's, you're not bigger than a group. Oh, they're not coming to see you, Otis. That is, that's it. <laughs> so it's not about that. We are coming to see the home temptations, not just Otis, <laughs> right? So with interdependence, that each group member has their own skill and their own talent they bring in to the dynamic. So input variable. So what is within the system, within the group? So you have your, the group members, the resources you have, funds if applicable, tools, knowledge, relationships to other groups, the physical environment, whether it be where you guys set up or where you guys meet up rather, or the virtual space. Process variable. So these are the procedures that the groups follow to reach its goal. So there are instructions that I give you as your instructor, but of course your group has the freedom to create those rules on your on your own. And for example, we do have the group contract to kind of not not kind of set up not only camaraderie, but saying, hey, these are the rules of how, how we are going to structure our group. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we also have output variables. So the outcomes of the group processes such as solutions, decisions, growth, and satisfaction. So the product, the papers, visual aids, the videos, all the things that your group produces is your output. Then we have synergy. So back in the day, synergy was one of those corporate buzzwords, almost like quiet quitting is today. It's one of those corporate work type buzzwords. So synergy is when the group and what they produce is greater than the sum of its parts. So yes, of course, we can do certain things alone, but it's better when we work together, in essence. But then we have entropy. So it's the randomness and chaos within the system. So how does that apply to us? What chaos can happen in a group? I know I've asked you what were some of the benefits of being in the group, but we also want to explore when, what are some of the disadvantages. And when everyone's on the same accord and working well and all systems are a go, it's great. It's popping. But say, for instance, we have one person who is dropping out of the group or you can't reach them or they might even have a personal emergency beyond their control. It's that randomness of the group dynamic that can contribute to his decay or contribute to things going awry within the group. So that's what entropy is. So you want to make sure to remain in contact, communicate with each other and to me, and be unified in those goals to complete the project and get the best grade that you can. So equifinality is the system's final state, which is reached by multiple paths and different initial states. So in other words, there's more than one way to reach a goal. So at the very end of the semester or at the end of each project, there are different groups and there are different products within, excuse me, not just products, but content. See, going back to my business mind here, projects and grades and things like that. So... At the end of those projects, then when the group 
equals or reaches rather equal finality. All right, so let me move myself over here. This is a enlarged version of a graphic that I have, but let's go ahead and check it out. So this, hopefully it has some, it makes sense of some of the terms that we just went over. So we have group sides, inputs, outputs, throughputs, <clears throat> and sources of noise or synergy. So with inputs, we have purpose, external constraints, member knowledge, education, experience, maturity, and contacts. So that's when, that's what the group brings. And of course, you have the group size, which is around like five or six people in our case. You have outputs. So what are, what do they yield or what? is the result of the project. So ideas, decisions, achievements, and socialization can result in those group dynamics. Dynamics. And then we have throughput. So what happens when you go through those processes to go from inputs to outputs? And then we have synergy or noise, and or noise rather. So we think about noise, <clears throat> When we're thinking about noise, we might be reminiscent of the transactional communication theory where there might be interrupters, but we also have synergy where each part of the group or each product of the group is put together beautifully. So, for example, we have interaction, interdependence on one another, demonstration of norms, definitions of power or power dynamics within the group, leadership, so one or two people might lead the other group members. We might have defined roles or roles that just spring about from one's talents and the processes. Okay, let's go to another one. So next we're going to talk about the social exchange theory. I talk about this theory also in interpersonal communication, but in essence, and if we want to get a little mathy here, in essence, we remain in relationships, any kind of relationship, whether it be friendship, romantic, business relationship, just any type of interaction with other human beings. You remain, or one remains in those dynamics if it's beneficial to them. Now, every relationship has its cost, and cost just means things that we have to do to maintain it. However, if the costs outweigh the benefits, then that would either force us to leave that relationship or at least we would be unsatisfied with that dynamic. So when we think about it like this, relationships are described in terms of costs, rewards, profits, and losses. And if the rewards exceed the cost, so let's talk about bringing back to group membership, then that's fine. So whether it be a club at school or a Greek organization or religious organization within your church or or other places of worship rather or being a college student is one big group. If those rewards outweigh the cost, then you will be more likely to stay within those groups. But if they don't, you might want to leave those groups because you're not getting satisfaction from those dynamics. So we seek people or groups that gives us more rewards that are greater to or equal than the cost we encounter in dealing with them. So rewards are the outcomes we desire. So getting a good grade, having fun in your group, getting to know more people versus the cost, some of the time commitments you have to do in doing the project, and some of those conflict management dynamics within groups. So just to give some more examples of the social exchange theory, the rewards can be pleasurable outcomes, like fellowship, job satisfaction, achievement, status, meeting personal needs, etc cost, mental effort, because it's a lot to deal with a bunch of people sometimes, <laughs> but sometimes it's unavoidable, so that's what this class is for. It teaches us how to do it. Anxiety, embarrassment, 
time and frustration, but hopefully those will be to a minimum. And then again, profits versus losses, profits and rewards, excuse me, profits occur when the rewards exceed the costs and losses occur when the cost exceeds the rewards. So it's just a little diagram. So people always want to keep their costs low and their rewards high. Next, we're going to explore the social, com excuse me, the symbolic convergence theory. That's when we talk about how we transform into an individual to a group member. So like I said before, one of the first things that we do in class is the group project, excuse me, the group contract. So you get to decide the rules for your individual group, come up with the group name, all those things. But we also talk about the group adventure project where you are hanging out. Now you're not just hanging out, you're trying to outline goals for the group, but in addition to having fun, it is a way for you guys to form bonds and work as a unit throughout the semester. <clears throat> Excuse me. So over time, the group develops a, like a shared consciousness and shared emotions, especially as you go along the process. So let's go ahead and take a deeper dive. So in this little graphic here, the symbolic convergence theory consists of sharing of emotions, stories, and values within a group resulting in group cohesiveness. Let's explore. So because you're in this class and this experience together, you have a common social reality. So you are in my class at this period of time working together. So you have your own unique personalities and identities, and we combine them together to share stories within the group, inside jokes, symbols, etc. We can think of this class as being its own one big group. So my small group communication class will differ than another professor, and it might differ than another professor at another school. We all have, as instructors, we all have our own unique ways of bringing the information together, putting the class together. Then, of course, thinking about systems theory, we do have constraints from our department of what we can and do teach, but we have the freedom to bring the information the way we need to. So the experience in this class with me will differ from other instructors because we're different people, so we can build upon this theory in our own experience. Next we have the structuration theory. So we structure our groups by making active use of rules and resources, hence the name structure, and we focus on behaviors. So when we join the new group, we use the rules that we used in other groups. So for example, Say if we were, excuse me, say if we were in person, I would be in front of the classroom, you will see, you will sit on the opposite side, I will speak to you, and I would write notes on the board, all those things. And you and I know exactly what to do because we've been in classrooms before. I've taught before. <laughs> You've been students before. So we kind of fall into those roles. I don't have to say, and because we're grown, I don't have to say, okay, boys and girls, go ahead and sit down, take out your pencils, take out your paper, no, we just automatically do it because your kindergarten and first grade teachers were saying those things. By the time you guys come to me, we all know what to do. Conversely, I've seen teachers before. So in this role, I know what to do. I've been teaching for a while. So I'm not, I'm not trying to be like, oh, what do I do with this marker? This computer, how do I turn this on? I've done this before. So that's one example of structuration theory. It, whether it be online, so the online structure, we have our modules, we have our assignments, you're watching this video right now, 
to gain more information. I am speaking to a camera right now, but hopefully you'll be hearing me from the other side later on when you play this video. So that is a different type of structure that it took me a little bit longer to learn because I am used to being in front of a classroom, having you guys in front of me and all those things. So being able to be comfortable around the camera and explaining this, almost like a YouTuber, almost, is a little bit new to me, but I'm able to create that structure. All right, so we focus on rules and systems. There's that systems world again. Rules are explicit or implied prescriptions of how people should behave in a group. And the systems, or the group itself, is composed of many different elements. And we go back to systems theory. We've seen it again. So just a brief image of what that looks like. Actions produce and reproduce social structures and then they're enabled and constrained by those structures. So you know how to behave in a group because you've been in groups before. You knew what worked and didn't work so you try to replicate that again. If you want to try something new in a group dynamic that's cool and then you will replicate that dynamic again or extinguish the behavior if you didn't like it. So. We do the action, the action is reinforced because it works. If it doesn't work, we extinguish the action. So pretty much how that works. Then we have functional theory. All right, so it talks about an effect of a given behavior in a group or system, and we are identifying certain behaviors that would increase your likelihood of success in a group and having you guys be able to achieve your goals. All right, see, I'm moving myself around again. All right, nope, gotta move myself over here, thank you. <laughs> All right, so effective group problem solving occurs when the members attempt to satisfy task requirements, overcome time constraints and take time to review the process. So to take a deeper dive into what that means, satisfying task requirements is understanding problems, brainstorming solutions, evaluating alternative solutions and implementing the solution. So just making sure that, hey, are we doing the task the way we need to? brainstorm to solve the solutions, see which one works in the evaluation process and implementing what works. Then we have time constraints because this class is to last forever. So we have deadlines, not only for you, but for me, because I have to make sure to space the assignment so you can do your work. And then I can grade the work, you get feedback for your work, and then eventually all the grades will be done. So you and I are under time constraints. And then, of course, being able to review the choices and reconsider choices if necessary. All right. So let's go back to the mainstream. All right. It's a little bit of a longer lecture this time. So you can definitely break up the videos into little pieces and review. Let me know if you have any questions and I can help you out and help you break down some of the theories some more. There were a lot of theories that we went over. However, with any theory, just make sure that, okay, the theory is just describing what naturally happens. So for example, for systems theory, we were able to use the school as its own system. Or with the social exchange theory, we were like, okay, well, I understand that rewards should be more than cost and people will stay in the group. So it's it can be a little bit difficult, but once you take a deeper dive in and connect it to examples, it should make it a little bit easier. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I will see you guys a little bit later. Let me know if you have any questions. Alrighty. Bye.